Steve Hooks is Fritgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. We are very, very close to the end of this field. So we're just going to keep half an eye on this one because I suspect that we're going to run into a little bit of problem, a little bit of trouble, a little bit of problems. Uh, just on the last little bit of this. And so what I'm kind of thinking is it might be better if we go and get our mower, hook that one on, and then just run up and down here, and we can also go and just get that patchy bit right around the big rock over there. And there's another little tiny bit that we could do over there. Then we could run over it with the rake, and then we could run over it with just the baler. It might actually end up being faster than doing this. Now, we'll let this one run, just one more pass. It'll go up, it'll turn around, and then it'll run back down again. And it should be fairly quick running all the way back down. At least that's what I'm hoping. Because it's downhill pretty much all the way apart from that bit right there. We've got that little tiny bit of a dip. So I'm kind of hoping that this will work. That one will go to there. It's going to go out and do its usual little spin around. The baler is running nicely. There we go. Right, the turn is complete. Um, I will just say that Seasons has now been released. It is fully released. I don't know yet what it's like. I haven't heard any feedback from it. I haven't heard any reports or anything. I will not be putting Seasons onto this map. You can add Seasons to gameplay after the fact if you want to. I've got no plans to add it onto this one. But I will be starting a series next week with Seasons and it however that works out i know the moment we're not 100 percent sure if i'm going to be using the seasons mod on felsburn and just taking my first look on there or if i'm going to be able to do it using a um a different map the, the map that we originally planned to do our gameplay on anyway if, if i can do that that would be absolutely fantastic but there's no guarantee that i can actually make that work so just going to do now a second is you know, bring that down oh no uh, switch over turn that baler off a second and I bring you back to there and I unhitch that one and I'll go and get that other mower and I'll get that one fastened on um, there is a really good mod for mowers on mod hub that's one of the competition ones and I haven't actually tried it yet but it puts everything into a windrow Eliminates one of the jobs. I'm thinking that we ought to use that mower. I'm thinking that we could get that set after we've bought our new tractor. Because I, I think this tractor here would struggle to run it. But once we've got our next um, tractor, we could seriously consider using that set of mowers. And doing all of our work with it. I, I see no real reason why we couldn't. See so what I am going to do is I am just going to... No, not that one. I'm just going to lower this mower down a second and I'm going to bulldoze those two out of the way. Just like that. There. Like that. And I'm going to bring them back over here. I'm going to start that one and then I'm going to start that one and then I'm going to go Control v and lower them both down. Let's try that again. Control v lower them both down. There we go. Right. Hit Control v this time. It didn't control the, and bring that up round there like that. See, it's like this little hill here. Our tractor really does struggle with that little bit. Um, there's not really a great deal that we can do about that, but we should be able to run up and down our strip right here very, very quickly. Actually, it, it shouldn't take too long. It's, it's literally we get most of it done in two passes by the look of it, and then. We're going to have to do three pass. Uh, no, I think we meant uh, not two. I was going to say um, two passes, not three passes. We probably have to do two passes with the rake as well, just to be able to pick all of that up. But I, this is definitely going to be quicker, I think, than trying to run through here with the baler on that tractor. Because it, any minute now, it was going to be like stopping anyway and not turning properly. And... All the way down this end, that would be a single pass. It should be a single pass with the um, the rake as well. I wouldn't have thought that it would struggle with this. For the most part, this bit over here, I suppose I could leave it. You know, it's, 
there's, there's not a lot here, really, is there? A tiny bit of grass in places, but honestly, it's, I don't think there's enough to worry about. We'll leave that. We won't, we won't concern ourselves with it. We'll go back over that side. And it'd be quicker if I lifted up the mowers, I suppose. It's a bit late now. I'm already committed. I started doing it with everything lowered down. So I'm going to finish this with everything lowered down. It's just the way it is. And then we go back up through here, like this. Uh, certainly this end, we'd be able to get it with just one mower. Uh, with, with one mower, with one pass with the rake. But it's going to change. As, as we get further up, we're going to end up needing two passes, I suspect. Uh, that's all right. We can cope with that. We can run through and do two passes. This, we've got to go up that end of the field anyway, so we come back down again. So yeah, I think two passes, that'll be fine. And then we do it with the baler as well. It should be a pretty quick, easy run. I'm gonna need, am I going to need to do three here? Ooh, it's just come out just a little bit. Let me lift those two up like that. And then I go back over this way and lower them down. And I'll take that bit out round there like that. And now we've got a whole load of mess here to try and gather up and clean up if we can. And this is the bit that's sort of a little bit more time consuming. There's a couple more bits here. That, yeah, I'm not going to be too fussy about it. Not this time. When we've got a better tractor, I might be a little bit more fussy about it. But right now, I don't think I need to be. Because, honestly, it's, it's just going to take too long. Um, and the tractor is very, very slow getting around as well, isn't it? So I bring that one in there. So I don't want to go too tight to that. But I, I can go tight enough. I, I can go, re you know, sort of push in reasonably on it. And then we'll do another pass around as well. Um, a few bales over there. One more pass around. I bring that in like that. There we go. And then go out. And again, we got like a whole load of little bits that have just been left. And it's not going to make that big a difference leaving a few long bits of grass in the field. Because they'll sort of it'll grow in around those. It's leaving the little bits of grass behind on the ground that's a bit more of a mess. You don't really want to do that. And now that we're sort of using this new method of cutting all the grass and everything, we're, we're, we're going to have less of those bits being left behind. Because, um, well, not, not the new method, sorry, the, the, the baler. The, the, the baler is the bit that actually makes the difference to it. That's, that's the, the thing that does make a crucial difference. And if I run one pass along here, like this, I'll leave the other side of the rock because we're not generally going to be paying much attention to that anyway. So I think that will be fine. A little bit there that got left behind. Again, never mind. I appreciate that some of you are going to be pulling your hair out over this because I generally don't like it either. And it's just, it's purely because of how much time it's going to take. If, if I spend too long messing around trying to keep everything spotlessly tidy, it's just going to end up taking, it. like, it literally is going to take way too long. And um, I, I don't want to do that. Steady. So I'll bring this one back over here. Yeah, the mower is quite... Dead. Well, the back mower is fine. That one's really clean. But the other one is a little bit grubby. I'm still going to leave it, though. So i got to unhitch that one like that. I don't have any choice in the matter. And then I bring you back like this. Try and turn round without knocking over my tent. Because we really, really don't want... I tell you what, sometimes it is not easy to turn round, right? Sometimes you just don't have sufficient room to quite turn how you wanted to. And you've you got to plan a, a, a turn a little bit better. I didn't plan that first the first time where I ended up too far over against those machines. That was simply poor planning on my part. I, I didn't shunt quite as well as I should have done. I just ripped the peg out there. So I've, I've knocked down my tent after all. After all that careful work trying to avoid knocking down the tent, it didn't work. I failed miserably in that regard. So now I'll go and get the front weight. I want to keep that one on. And then... Don't drive on the tent. I'm going to just put the peg back in again. 
Uh, we'll go over here. So I already had my small tractor hooked up to the fertilizer spinner. That, that one was ready to go, but we're, we're not going to... Oops, too far. Right. Yeah, I know I shouldn't also be doing that, but I, I want to get a move on. I want to try and get this job finished so that we can get on to the next job, which is the wrapping. We want to use our new wrapper, and I can't do that until I have finished doing the bailing. Can't do that until I finish doing this. Um, again, so we'll, we'll be kind of... I'm, I'm in a little bit of a rush on just, just for today, so I am breaking a couple of rules. Actually, I've only broken one rule. I tabbed. That was it. That is literally the only rule that I've broken. I'll bring you along here. And then I'll go round in a circle. So we've got a little bit of a mess on the ground. I'll probably gather all of that up. We can go round here a couple times. We should be. This, this is the difficult bit, is coming in around here and not ripping the wheel off the side of the rake as you go in round. Um, like, not ripping it on one of the trees or against the corner of the rock right there where I got too close. Like that, you know, pretty pretty much there. That summed up what I shouldn't have done. Um, do what, do what I say, not what I do, children. Ladies and gentlemen, children at home, following along, do what I say, not what I do. It's very important that you follow that one extremely valuable lesson. Is something that will serve you well in life. If you do what I do... Um, yeah, it, it, it may not work out quite so well for you. Just saying, just saying, that's all. And I go back round here again. So I got another little bit down here. See, it's like the, there's lots of little bits where we've left it all behind. Um, I'm just wondering how much that would be improved if we were to have a different tractor on the mower. Whether it would be improved at all, I mean, it might not make very much difference at all. On the other hand, it might make a huge difference. Next, I go up there and then out and around. And I'm trying to just sort of pull that up through the middle there so that I don't have to do any different. And I think we were successful. Ideal. Right. Now, I'll bring that one down there. Like that. And yeah, we're going to be left with some little sort of messy bits at the end here. Uh, there's not really a great deal we can do about that other than spending a great deal of time cleaning and tidying everything. And again, that's not something that I particularly want to do. Like right there, in, right at the back there, um, a little bit of grass that's gotten left behind that we don't really want to have left behind. Um, two passes is sufficient up through here. It's quite slow, this one, isn't it? 11 miles an hour. Is it supposed to go faster than that? Is it supposed to go more than 11 miles an hour? I, I don't really know. I mean, it, yeah, we've got our electric tractor has got a top speed of 19 miles an hour, which is blistering speeds. But I'm, I'm not expecting a miracle here. But, I mean, even if we could approach some of those blistering speeds and, and get to 13 or 14 miles an hour. But I don't think they do. I think the rake is, is pretty much the same as the mower and the baler um, being quite restricted in speed. It's a bit of a shame, really. Cause I, I do feel that there's room for improvement there. Never mind. I'll bring you out and around like that. And then... Right, there's such a small amount over here, I'm not even sure it's worth bothering with. Uh, honestly. That bit right there, that's it. That's, that's, that's our sole bit. And then there's another little bit there, which honestly is not going to make much difference anyway. So I'll run back up here again and lower down ooh, about there, I should think. That'll gather up just that last little bit there. And then... We start heading up through here. I need to get in to the side of this one. Like that, so that I don't nudge that bale. And then I'll come back out again. And we'll start running up through here. I could combine some of this into, like, combine it all together. But once I get to about this point, we're running out of room to be able to do that. So we'll stick this with two, because we've got to come back up here with the baler anyway. And then as soon as I get down to the other end of the field, we're done. We can jump onto the baler and we can finish up the last of the grass baling. The first time that we've done our grass baling using a square baler, I might add. Which is 
quite a good thing. I'm, I am very pleased with what we've done. Like, overall, the results of what we've done he here uh, this week and last week, um, I am actually very pleased with it. I feel that we've done quite well with this. Um, yeah, it may not all have worked out quite as, quite as we'd planned, quite as we'd hoped. But I think overall, things, you know, we, we have reason to be fairly pleased with what's happened. I'm just going to dump that one there for a minute. We'll worry about uh, tidying up afterwards. And we jump into you. We bring that one on round. And I'll run down to the other end of the field first. So we get that one going. Like that. And then race up here, up the steepest bit first. How are we going to do? We're going to struggle, but at least we haven't got the mower on the front, so it, it's certainly making life a little bit easier for us. Just pushing up there. Still not particularly easy. But it is doing it. That's the important thing. I might just leave that bit of crap. We'll, we'll see how I feel when I get back up here. The great thing with Seasons, when we're on the map that's using Seasons, um, obviously it's not this series, but you, know, you leave grass on the ground, a few days later when you go back, it's all gone. It rots away. Such a beautiful thing, being able to just rot the stuff away and not have to worry about it. It really is. It's such, such a wonderful, amazing little feature that you can get rid of the grass like that. Um, you don't have to worry quite so much about getting every single tiny little speck. You can treat it a bit more like real life if you do happen to leave the odd little bit. It doesn't matter because when you let your stock into the field afterwards... They go around and they clean all those little bits up. That's the first thing they do is they rush around the field and they eat up all of those little bits you've left behind. And it's really helpful. It is. It's, it's a really useful thing. That's, that's a good reason for having animals. They go around and they clean up all the food. I mean, technically, if you didn't have animals, you probably wouldn't be doing the job in the first place. So, um, yeah, I, I guess they, they, they do go a bit hand in hand, really, don't they? Let's go up there and grab that bit. And then we just got, well, a, a pass back through it and we got the bit around the rock. And that's done. Then I can come whizzing back up this end of the field. I've got that bit right there. That trailer is in the way. I'm going to circle round and get that. Because that's right out on the road. That is something that's going to end up bugging me. And I have no doubt several of you as well. That's, that's not something that we want to leave there. So we'll go and get that. I'll go this way. Like this. There, go through there. Right, there we go. I grab that bit, and then if I swivel round like that, we can go back through there again and just get that other little tiny bit. Going uphill now, so it's a lot slower. If I lift the pickup, I'm hoping... No, that doesn't make any difference. But if I turn the baler off, that makes a difference. That makes life a lot easier. And go into there, and... Grab that bit, and where, where, there it was, there it was. I knew there was a little tiny bit here somewhere. Right there, that's, that's it. That's an off, it's another one of those bits, it's like right off the edge, so you probably would end up missing it for quite a few harvests to come, and it's the sort of thing that's going to end up bugging me. So if I gather it up now, then there's no chance of us missing it. And it causing any of us any aggravation. It is bad enough that we've got the, you know, all of those bits of grass there around that rock. Because it's quite a big turning circle for the baler, really, isn't there? And you do kind of have to take that into account. I think that next time, what we might do is take a few passes around the rock before we start doing the baling, maybe? Uh, not really sure at the moment. Oh... I'll have a think about that one. I'm not quite sure how we're going to go about doing it. But I'm going to run this one down here. And then I've got another pass that I need to do when I come back down. But I also I want to go up there. There's a couple little bits. Again, like with some of these bits of grass, we, we can kind of just leave them. It's not all that important. But there's some bits like those bits over there that maybe I want to gather up. Just so that I haven't got to worry about them later. Now, I'm going to start on the inside here. I'm going to go around this way, and then I'll work out in the same spiral that I was working when I um, did the rowing up. There's quite a thick crop on the inside here, but that's because none of this bit in here had all got cut, but none of it actually got um, 
Like, the baler didn't go over it because we did most of the cutting when we came round uh, with both the mowers on. Go up there and get that. See, I've left a little bit behind right there. I may get that when we come back through. I may not. Really slows down going up the hill. And it's, again, this is why we want a bigger tractor. A bigger and better tractor is going to make a difference. And yes, I know I could be getting that case and get that one at like $100,000. But I'd rather save up more and get a better tractor. Because real life, that is what you would do. You'd weigh up the difference between the two. And it's very often worth paying out the extra money because of the reliability. Because you're not having those breakdowns. And this is something that I'm thinking that we want to be taking into account. Because we don't have random breakdowns. I used to in FS17. I haven't done it on um, in FS19 yet. But I did have a random sheet that I used to roll for. At the beginning of each week, when I did the week's recordings, we had a random sheet. So, um, my random events that happened, I had a vehicle that would break down. I had to randomly roll on one of my vehicles. I had my stock got ill, and I lost a load of stock, and, um, and things like that. But I, I had machinery breaking down, and then I wasn't able to use it for a whole week. And sort of things like that... Is, is quite cool because the, I, I felt that that more accurately re, uh, represented real life. You know, actual breakdowns and things going on in the background. Um, you got no real control over. I mean, you can service a machinery as much as you like. An old machine, even though it's had full service, it's looked after, it's had all the oil change and everything else that it's supposed to have, it can still break down. At, and it's always going to break down when it's under its heavy workload. Like a tractor is tractor is not going to break down when you don't need to use it. A combine is not going to break down in the middle of winter. When if it did, you wouldn't even notice. Combine is going to break down when it's in heavy use. Trouble is, when the combine's in heavy use, you really, 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 really need it not to break down. Right? That's, that's when you need that machine to be absolutely 100% reliable. And this is where the problems arise. How do you make sure it's reliable? get a new machine and that's the same with the tractor like when you're not really using the tractor very much the chances are it's not going to break down because you're not pushing its limits when you start pushing the limits of the tractor and you're doing bigger jobs that's when it's going to break down that's when you're going to have trouble with it right we'll do that and we'll tip out two bales like that yeah that that that'll be when it breaks down that's when you have trouble is when the machine is being worked really hard. I'm just going to dump that one right there. And, oops. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, now we're going to go running back down here. And we're going to go and get our new wrapper. Now it's roughly 15 seconds to do the full sequence. With the standard in-game wrapper. As far as I know. That's pick up, wrap and then drop down. Something along the lines of 15 seconds. This one should be quicker. The pick up and drop down sequences, I don't think those are any different. I, they, they, they don't appear to be any faster, anyway. Um, I think they might be. You never know. But I, I, I don't think they are. I'll put that one there, like that. You can stop, and then run up and grab the tractor again, and we can get the wrapper on. Um, so... We don't have anything that represents that uh, breakdown at the crucial moment in the game. And it's going to happen more frequently with an old machine than it is with a new machine. Right? It just stands to reason. A brand new machine is going to be a lot... It, it, it's, not per it's not perfect. I'm not suggesting new machines never break down. But I'm suggesting the likelihood of a new machine breaking down is far, far higher than the likelihood of one an older machine breaking down. Uh, uh, but, uh, sorry, a new machine's far less likely than an old machine breaking down. Right? That's, that's, that's the point. Not, not far more far more likely. And a new machine is far less likely to break down than an old machine by a very, very long way. I think it does actually speed up the pickup as well. But you can see there, that's definitely wrapping a lot faster than the standard wrap. Right? Much better. And I'm loving this blue... I am loving this blue. I don't know if the blue is for a particular thing. If it is, brilliant. 
Um, please, somebody let me know what it is in the comment section. I know that uh, pink is for breast cancer. And some of the other colours have particular reasons as well. But I'm definitely not familiar with all of them. If you buy pink wrap, there is normally some money donated to breast cancer um, and breast cancer research. Well, in particular, this uh, is not donated to the cancer. This is donated to breast cancer research. Um, that's why some farmers will go and buy the pink wrap. It's because they can then donate uh, some of the money that they pay out for the shrink wrap is donated to breast cancer research, uh, which is a really, really good thing. Um, and not everybody's aware of this. I have mentioned it before, but I will say it again. Not everybody is aware. Uh, a lot of people think that breast cancer is something that only affects women. It's not. Breast cancer affects men as well. Doesn't happen as frequently in men, um, but it does happen in men. I know this for a fact. My grandfather, um, not my um not 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 wesley everybody who knows wesley from the time lapse um you'll know that he passed away last year um but not him my other grandfather many many years ago is i don't know what we're looking at now is uh over 20 years ago now that he passed away and the original cause was i mean yeah it, it developed complications later on but he had breast cancer and that's what it was it was breast cancer and um, so yeah and, and it was th this was back in the 90s so it was over 20 years ago it was in um and she was in the very early 90s so we're looking at almost 30 years ago now at least 20 27 years i think something along those 27 or 28 years um it's a very long time it's a very very long time ago that my grandfather passed away and it was because of breast cancer um and i don't I haven't mentioned it very often, but I know that I have mentioned it, and I'm mentioning it right now again, because I feel that it's something that is important. Um, uh, so many men are unaware that it can affect you as well. And so, yeah, if, you know, children, you, this is, tell, like, the, I, I don't, I don't want to alarm. This is the problem. I don't want to alarm people. I, I don't want to get. I don't want to cause any unnecessary distress. But at the same time, I want to make sure that this is something that is known about. Um, it is possible to get it as a man. Um, so don't laugh it off, and don't sort of think that when, you know when you hear about breast cancer, breast cancer research, they they do events. Certainly here in the UK, there's like a, there's a big uh, cancer research run, but a lot of it is um, all about breast cancer. Um, and it's, yes, it's largely targeted at women because women get it are far more likely to get it than men are. Um, but men can still get it. So it's, don't feel that it's just for women. It's not something that is a cause for embarrassment or anything like that. Um, it affects men just, well, not just as much. It, it, it does affect men, okay? Um, so, yeah, it's... it's, it's it is definitely something that affects absolutely everybody. And for that reason, do take it seriously. Don't di don't just dismiss it. Don't think, oh, it doesn't affect me because I'm not a woman. Um, it, actually, it can. And yes, it's not 100% likely, but have you noticed anything strange? I mean, this, this just goes without saying anyway. If you ever notice anything strange, you're quite familiar with how your own body should look. If you ever notice anything strange, and you think, hmm, I don't remember that being there, uh, good idea to go and see a doctor. Doctor can have a look at it and say, well, actually, that has been there for the last 20 years. Um, you just not noticed it. When you say that you know things like the back of your hand, sometimes the back of your hand can be a strange place indeed. Uh, on the other hand, the doctor may have a look at it and say, we're just going to run some extra tests. Uh, There's no need for concern. And they may you know, run you into hospital and then they'll take a few extra tests and, and they will deal with it. These things are caught early enough, they can be dealt with. It's the people who notice something and don't say anything. And that's what happened in my grandfather's situation. He noticed something, but he didn't want to say anything. He, he was embarrassed about it and he, he didn't want to like, cause a fuss, that sort of thing. And unfortunately, it developed into something more. And that's like that so that there is a strong lesson there to be learned and 
I remember him very, very well. Uh, I, I, I never really talk about him because it was such a long time ago, but I do remember him and I remember him well and I miss him. And there's 30 odd years have gone by that we haven't had because he didn't say something. And if he had said something when he first noticed it, very, very, very high chance that he would still be here today. Okay, it's, that's, it's that simple. If he, had, if he had said something, he probably would still be here. So if you notice something, if anything is unusual, go and see a doctor. That's what doctors are for. That's what, they, that's what they do. That is their job. They are more than happy to take a look at something and say, nope, that's absolutely fine. They're not going to tell you off wasting their time. If you go in with something you think is a little bit peculiar and you want them to take a look and say, look, I, I really don't know what this is. I, I don't remember that being there last week. Um, they will they will take a look. And the doctor's not going to tell you off for wasting their time for something like that. Here in the UK, if you go to the doctor with cold, uh, chances are you get a bit of a dressing down for that because they don't like you wasting their time with colds when you just, you know, you, you wait it out. You go to them with a strange lump, they're not going to tell you off for that. They will take a look at that and they will take it seriously. They always do. All right? Always. Without fail. I've been to the doctor several times with a, a strange lump gone to him and I said I don't really know what this is it seems a bit odd so he's taking a look oh I don't think that's anything to worry about and that was that and I've gone to him another time I said I've got this strange thing here I, I, I don't really know what it is and he had a look at it and he said oh oh I have another, I'll have a closer look at that have you got anything have you got have you got any others and no, he, he sort of checked me over uh said, nope no, actually, that is absolutely nothing to be worried about. Um, we can see right here from this, this, and this is absolutely nothing to be worried about. Um, and, and that was that. It, it, it's that simple, right? It is literally that simple. There is nothing to be concerned about. And if there is, this, this is the reason that a lot of people don't like to go is because it might be bad news. What if it is? What if it is bad news, right? What if it is bad news and the doctor says, no, you need to go to your hospital as quickly as possible and get a string of tests done. Excellent. That's fantastic because it means that they're doing something. As soon as you've seen it, you're whipped off to hospital and you're having something done, which means that it's most likely going to be dealt with. I'm not going to stand here. And, well, I'm, I'm sitting, actually. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and I'm going to say, yeah, you'll be 100% fine because... Um, there is the small chance you won't be, but you're, the best chance is always get there as soon as you can and get it looked at as soon as you can. And that, that, that is it. That, that is it. So no matter how old you are, this, this sort of thing can affect anybody. Um, if you have any issues whatsoever, then go and look at them. How did I start talking about this? Oh, yeah, the pink wrap. So if anybody knows what the blue wrap is, then let me know, because I don't know if this actually stands for something, because there was a couple of options with this one, wasn't there? If we go in here... And I quite like that there were some extra options. There was a yellow one as well, wasn't there? Uh, we had we had the standard options. Right, we look in here. you got the foil colour right there. White, black are standards. Um, pink is for breast cancer research. Green, I'm not really sure what green is. Somebody's told me what the green one is previously. I'm, I don't know if that's just another colour like the black and the white. Or if there's actually something behind it. And the blue and the yellow here, I've got no idea. I don't know if those are just extra ones that they put in. Uh, because somebody did tell me a little while ago that there are some of the colours. There is actually like meaning behind some of the other colours. It's not just pink. There are other colours that have meaning as well. Anyway, we'll have to finish doing the rest of the wrapping in our next episode. Because we have run out of time. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Fritgar. Goodbye, and see you later.